something in 15 minutes that it'll take you 15 years to get out. I tried yesterday, but God's gonna make me laugh! I'd like to, to read just a portion of Exodus chapter chapter 3, just a little bit, and then I'm going to Jeremiah, uh, just to embellish this point. Uh, Exodus 3, 1, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And of course, with all Moses' scientific Egyptian background, he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. I, I want to use that to sort of embellish where I'm going tonight. But notice, the bush was not consumed, just, just kept on burning. And because it kept on burning, it, 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 it captured Moses' attention. In Jeremiah chapter 20, and as I thought about what happened in Jamaica, I, I knew this is where I had to go tonight. And verse 7, Jeremiah is now in the middle of his ministry and at a point where I'm sure he's convinced by now that everything should be working smoothly. And in verse 7, he says, O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me. And I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily, everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. I want you to look at somebody and simply tell them the fire won't go out. I'm not an Old Testament preacher, I will admit that. I'm not a storyteller type. Hebrew is more descriptive and, and Greek is more definitive and I spend a lot of time defining and not describing. But. I noticed something that is quite significant to all of us and I would like to talk to gifted people tonight. I'll open by saying for every everlasting relationship God has put into place everlasting safeguards. Because whatever God puts in place to protect his purpose 
is ever, as everlasting as the purpose he intends to protect. I propose then that if you're going to deal with Jeremiah chapter 20, you've got to deal with Jeremiah chapter 1. And he's saying to the prophet, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew. And before thou cometh forth, out of the womb I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. It would seem to me then that God does not give Jeremiah's existence as a credit to his mother or father. He attributes the prophet's existence to himself. <sighs> I wonder, can you catch in your mind the fact that you might be here because God formed you for a reason. <laughs> Not attributed to parents. So you don't live for your parents. Your existence is not attributed to your friends. So you don't live for your friends. It's not attributed to yourself. So you don't live for yourself. If God said. You are here because of me. Then you can only live for the one who put you together. For this life. He, he, he said I formed you. Yeah, sure, I fashioned you. That means that I took time out to especially put you together for what it is I want you to do. If I put you together for what it is I want you to do, then I will dictate what you do. Uh, because if I put you together for what I want you to do, and you don't do what I want you to do, then I didn't put you together for what I want you to do because whatever I put together does what I wanted to do. That's why you're losing some friends. Because they don't fit in the plan of God for what God wants you. Oh, help me tonight. Uh, can I take my time? Oh, they, they turned the clock. They turned it off. <laughs> it, it, it is here. He, he formed for his purpose. He didn't form you for your purpose. And so consequently, he has to get the notion of your purpose out of you in order to reinstate his purpose in you. Now the struggle is, once I have begun to move in my purpose, and God then begins to turn me from my purpose to his purpose, and that doesn't happen easily. I, uh, now I, I went to Moses just for a little bit here, and, 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 and I want you to see something that, 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 that was, was profound in my thought. When God spared Moses, and I'm going to talk about Jeremiah, just allow me to, uh, you know, just, just this little, yeah, addendum. And, and, and he, 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 he saves Moses from Pharaoh, but he puts Moses in Pharaoh's house. All of the decadence of Egypt now becomes a part of Moses' life before Moses becomes aware of God's purpose. If you notice, he spends 40 years in Pharaoh's house. Then God takes 40 years in the desert to get the 40 years of Pharaoh out of Moses. Oh God. And then, 
he puts him 40 years to take Israel from Egypt. Do you see what I mean? You see, you think God only began to deal with your life when you came to church. But God was working in your past to make your present more powerful. Oh, I feel God here. Uh, you don't want to admit where you're coming from. But if it wasn't for where you're coming from, you wouldn't be able to go where you're going. Uh, I got to work tonight. It's, it's, it's here, you see. Because the purpose of God has to be established once we have begun to move in time. Anything that God has purposed, he purposed before you got here. But you have to come to the cognizance, you have to come to the spiritual consciousness of what it is God intends for you to do. Let's go to the next level here. When God has said it in eternity, it has to be revealed in time. Because everything that God purposes is challenged by the enemy. Anytime he entrusts a gift in anybody and he entrusts his purpose in anybody, the enemy attacks immediately. I, I couldn't understand this earlier because I was confused. I thought that if God insisted, there should be no problem. Uh -huh. and, and this is Jeremiah's dilemma right through here because the gift of God is shrouded in mysterion, which means that through eternity the enemy does not know what God intends if you understand that you understand then that the mysterion keeps the enemy away because the enemy cannot attack God anyway he can't attack God because God is pristine in his power. He is omnipotent and there is nothing the enemy can do because the gift is in the hand of God and it's shrouded in mystery. Once the gift is presented to the recipient or the carrier of the gift, that's the only time the gift can be attacked because the gift cannot be attacked in the pristine power of an omnipotent God because there's no enemy that can get to God to stop God from doing what he's going to do but once the gift is transferred into the human vessel then the enemy who could not attack the giver attacks the recipient of the gift oh god i feel it here just you, you see let me just see once you begin to pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven you have just volunteered your earthly vessel for a heavenly treasure interestingly enough the enemy did not know you were designated until god transfers an eternal gift in time it is critical here because he cannot attack god but he can attack you i couldn't understand this i got beside myself because i said well lord how do you give me a gift and allow the trials of life to come and what god is saying here to me is the gift once i give it opens the door for the enemy to attack your character he can't destroy the gift but if he can destroy you you won't use the gift oh, i feel it here this is why when you're gifted you cannot expect to be gifted and not attacked oh god i wish you could understand this because there is no way that the enemy is going to get to the gift other than through you but the only problem is by the time the enemy finds out that you have the gift it is already too late how might i work this how about I work this? You, you see, you, you have to understand the premise. Can I teach? I'll, I'll hoop a little later, but if you just allow me right through here. 
You, you see, how do you attack the gift or how do you attack the purposes of God? You attack by attacking the vessel that God has given the gift to. Now, all of us believe Jesus is God. And the difficult thing here is in James, he says, God cannot be tempted, neither tempteth he any man. Jesus, the Son of God, is God. But Jesus can be attacked. Why can Jesus be tempted when the Father can't? Because Jesus has an element that the Father does not have, and that is flesh. You see, once the gift is transferred to the flesh, then the enemy comes after the flesh to negate the gift. Oh, I feel it here. But here is where he went wrong. Because I know what I know. I have a double confirmation that I'm gifted. I know it in my spirit and I know it when I'm attacked. Oh, I feel God in this house. Oh, so I don't go negative on the negative. I go positive on the negative. Because when the devil attacks me, he reveals to me that I am gifted by God. Too late. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. Now, now, can I? God is never reactionary. Touch your neighbor. Say, I know you're going through something, but it's because you're gifted. I know, I know they're talking about you, but it's because you're gifted. I know they don't like you, but it's because you're gifted. It is here. It is here. It is here now that we, we grasp the significance because of the Mysterion. Understand the Mysterion. The Mysterion is, is it's, it's, it's something that God holds in his hand and is only revealed by his spirit. It is not intellectual. It is not intellectual because you cannot gain this knowledge outside of the revelatory expression of the Holy Spirit. You can't get it. So when God reveals it and you become cognizant of your calling, that's when the devil finds it out. He does not find it out before. Now because God calls the end from the beginning, and he gives all gifts in eternity and they're revealed in time he has already factored what the enemy is going to do when you get the gift but the enemy doesn't know if the enemy knew he would not have crucified the Lord of glory because God already factored that the enemy was going to put him on the cross but when he got on the cross he released the Holy Ghost the only thing the enemy is doing with you is releasing your power oh I feel the Spirit of God here oh, touch some people and say I feel powerful even in my pain I feel more powerful and more anointed when the enemy is on my case here now then you all sit down you just sit down you see there's a difference now and then and, and 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 I'm going to work there's a difference then between seeking God to help facilitate your goals and dreams and being given a divine assignment to fulfill his calling I said to the Lord I said now what are you talking about here he said he said there's a difference between you asking me to help you to do what you want to do than for me to reveal that I own all of you I said well how is it different he said well it's the difference between being in the army and being in the reserves in the reserve you just come in every now and then and and do your little bit but now when I call you you're in my army 
I said, well, Lord, some of us might not get that. He said, well, it's the difference between taking a woman out occasionally when you have time and marrying one because then you're with her even when you're not seeing her. I said, Lord, help me with this. He said, it's the difference between a request for bacon and eggs when you ask the chicken and the hog. He said, because the chicken can lay egg and keep on living, but the hog has got to die. Oh, I feel God here. You see, when you, when you operate that, within the parameters of my choice and operate in the parameters of his choice you're dealing with something totally and profound I said well I must take it theologically and if you doubt it just go to the wilderness with Jesus as he walks in the temptation of the enemy he refutes and refutes him on every side when I see Jesus under temptation I see the master handling the word I see power I see strength I see him talking on on, on the edge with power that surpasses anything that we have ever seen and then I see that same Jesus at Gethsemane and now I have a total of the picture when he's facing the devil he can move things up and down but when he is facing God things get a little difficult he didn't ask God to help him get through 40 days of fasting but when it came for his purpose he began to say nevertheless not my will but thy will be done it seems to me that it was easier to handle temptation than it was to handle the purpose of God can I just take it a little further you will not travail over mis understanding people like you will travail over misunderstanding God you will not travail over losing a million dollar house like you would over losing your church you will not prevail oh God I know it's truth over losing your charm but you sure would have a problem losing your anointing I heard David in the middle of his mess you can take my crown you can take my kingdom you can take my house but one thing don't you ever take from me don't take my anointing can I say this to you in all humility it is easier facing the devil than it is facing God because when I face the devil I got God to help me but when I face God who oh I feel the Holy Ghost and so now it brings me to the text when you understand this you see now that this man has been moved by God uh, Jeremiah understood he said Lord I know these people I know their behavior and I know how they act I really don't want to do this I don't want to do this at all gifted people who are moved by God don't rush to take the job it's people who don't know what they're getting into I feel like preaching in here oh yeah oh yeah if you run a poll on folk and you go down checking people who have great ministries they were not running into that job they had something else to do that was making good money this ain't about money honey you can't pay me to preach yeah you ain't got enough money to pay me to preach because it's like fire I let that alone for a while give somebody a high five and tell them for what I had to go through you can't pay me for my gift I had hell to pay 
it is Jeremiah who is saying now Lord I, I really don't want to do this and God begins to move on him to be a prophet he is now prophesying and the more he speaks and the more God shows his gift the more the enemy comes after him he is now in the middle of his ministry and it would seem now that he should have no problems and all of a sudden he is faced with a man called Pashor now Pashor held the office of the Nagid and the Nagid is the commander he occupies the front he is also a Pagid which means that he's a superintendent not only is he the chief but he's the overseer of everybody in the house of God I want you to notice that in spite of his position God brings Jeremiah in who is what we call a Lanaby one man is inspired so Jeremiah is in there because of inspiration not because of oversight in terms of appointment when you look at Peshur he's in position because of his birth Jeremiah is in position because of his calling one man was born in place another man was born out of place but called in to place oh God I hope somebody's with me here tonight touch your neighbor and say it's calling that matters uh, it's calling it's calling now now can I take it just a little further the pastor held the office of chief overseer in the house of the Lord by a appointment of man according to the virtue of birth which means that he came into the job without any spiritual awareness how can you be spirited without spiritual awareness now if you will understand this you will see then that Pashor is naturally selected but Jeremiah is supernaturally selected one man is coming by merit of his intellect the other man is coming by merit of his contact oh God I feel it now anytime the devil notices your contact he attacks you supernaturally because he wants wants to shut your mouth before it gets open he wants to kill your gift while it's still in the belly now pastor is in place because of appointment Jeremiah is in place because of anointing one is appointed the other is anointed can I take it to the next level at this point Jeremiah is the first man in a second position I don't know if you've ever been there but think about David and think about Saul God anoints David to make him king but now Saul is still the king even though David is anointed and you have to learn to work with folk who you are anointed but they have the position oh God I feel it here you've got to learn how to walk with God through the valley of the shadow of death of being the first person in a second position and still have the fire to tell the enemy I am anointed and you are appointed and the victory shall be mine because when God gets ready he's gonna flip the script and turn Uh, 
I feel the power of God in this house. Give me some monitor sound, man. I feel like preaching. Give somebody a high five. And say, I know what's going on now. I know why I'm being attacked. Because the devil senses an anointing in me that he's trying to put out. The appointed without being anointed conceived it was his duty to repress Jeremiah. Whenever you deal with folk that don't understand anointing, they will try to put you in a bottle. But my friend, God just huffs and puffs till he blows you out. Touch your neighbor and say, you can't control me. I'm anointed. It is here that Jeremiah is struggling. It is here that he's having a problem because he can't understand how he can lay hands on the sick, how he can walk in the power of anointing, but still have to deal with some folk who ain't going nowhere. You got to watch for folk that you pull into your company who are appointed but not anointed. Oh God, I feel it. You got to watch who you have with you because appointed folk are easy targets of the devil to try to kill anointed folk. Ah, oh, touch two people real quick. Say, I need some anointed people around me. I'm sick and tired of having a lot of jealous folk who don't know anything about being anointed. It is here now that he's thrown in prison. He's smacked and he's whipped. And he's trying to understand how can this be? You call me. You form me before my mother's womb. If anybody ought to have power, I ought to have it. But outside power isn't always equivalent to inside power because it's the inside that determines are you really called or are you really gifted and so now he's opposed to by the appointed and the natural is over the supernatural but now remember that Jeremiah's God is and Pashor's father was the natural always was the supernatural is always is I feel you don't like preaching now you know where I am let's have some church touch somebody say was is touch somebody say anointing is uh -huh. your birth was who your daddy it was who God is is he is my Jehovah Jireh he is my Jehovah Shalom he is my Jehovah Maccabees he is my Jehovah Rofika he is my Jehovah Roa. He is my Jehovah Nisi. He is my Jehovah Sikanu. And is is going to be over, was any day. I'm getting ready to call and say, but I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Jeremiah refused to complain. Sad in his heart. But one day it hurt him so bad. He said, Lord, thou hast deceived me. In other words, I'm totally gone because I don't understand what I'm going through. I thought by now everything would be all right. But the more anointing I get, the meaner the folks are. I thought by now with all the gifts that you've shown me that by now folk would line up behind me and feel like I'm the best thing in the world. But it looks like the greater the anointing, the greater the affliction. But I'm beginning to find out that what I have is a real anointing. Because if it wasn't real, I'd have quit a long time ago. Shake somebody's hand. Said I tried to quit, but the fire would not go out. I'm feeling like preaching tonight. I feel
feel like lifting him up. I know the Holy Ghost is here. I know it's real. They tried to wet me. They tried to walk on me. They tried to wipe me out. The conspirators met. The liars had counsel. I had shadows and difficulties on all sides. But every time I said to myself, I'm walking out of here. Something on the inside comes alive. I've been disappointed, but it won't go out. I've been talked about, but it won't go out. I've been walked on, but it won't go out. I've been hurt, but it won't go out. They tried to take my church, but it won't go out. They tried to tear me down, but it won't go out. Something on the inside is like fire. Shut up in my bones. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Shake somebody's hand. Tell him it won't go out. They tried to shut me up, but I got more joy than I ever had. They tried to kill me, but every time they leave me, I bounce back up with a fresh anointing. The fire won't go out. I came by to tell Bishop Morton there's a fire burning in full gospel. Let them hate you. Let them talk about you. Let them try to stop you. But when you sit on the edge and feel like quitting, God will turn up the temperature in your soul and the fire won't go out. Touch me, people. Tell them what I have is real. It's real. It's been tested. It's been tried. It's been walked on. It's been talked about. It's been demon attacked. But it's still here. It's real. 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 It's real. Touch me, people. The fire won't go out. I don't care what they say. I lay head on the sick. They still recover. I speak to the dead. They still get up. I walk in the house and the demons tremble. The fire. I feel God in this house. I feel God in this house. Tell somebody it won't go out. I don't care what they do. It won't go out. I know what you got is real. For all the hell you've been through. And you're still here. That stuff is real. For the way they hate you. Look at you funny. You can tell the enemy. Do what you want to do. But the fire is here to say what I got is real because it's been tested you're gifted you're gifted I'm closing because I should close but I want you to notice something as I close and I want you to get one person by both hands in a moment Paul says to Timothy he says, Timothy, be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. And I'm saying that sounds awfully ambiguous, if not contradictory. Because I'm saying, Lord, according to is not out of. I mean, I can have a, a billion dollars and you say, brother, I say, I'm going to give you something out of what I have. 
I said, fine, and I give you three dollars. I didn't lie. I gave it to you out of. But if I say I'm going to give it to you according to, I'm talking about everything I have. And here is what seems ambiguous to me. If you were going to give me power out of all you have, why should there be any affliction? And the answer is simply, if you're gifted, you're going to have affliction. Because you got an inner sleeve, you got an outer sleeve, but it's one sleeve. And whenever God shows you that you were gifted, and when you realize it, the enemy found it out too. Oh. So now when he attacks, <laughs> the same power that gifts me is the same power that protects me. But the process proves that what I have is real. Take somebody by both hands. Preachers get a hold to each other. If anybody ought to hold each other, we ought to hold each other. You're gifted. You're gifted. Peter said, think it not strange. It's not unusual. Full gospel, you're gifted. You've been attacked. I know it was God's will for me to go to Jamaica because I was attacked. They pushed the bus like they wanted to push the saints over. Ah, oh, but when folk began to speak in other tongues and the anointing filled the bus. Gifted. Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, I didn't understand, but I can't shut my mouth. Preach your way out of it. Sing your way out of it. Dance your way out of it. Uh, worship your way out of it. Give your way out of it. Whatever he gifted you to do, just keep on doing it because the fire won't go out. They've given you three months. The devil is a liar. You can't stop what God has ordained from the foundation of the world. And he knew what you'd go through. I want you to hold your brother, your sister tight. I want you to hold them like they're on the edge of suicide. I want you to hold them like you know what they're going through. I want you to hold them like the anointing of God is going to pass from you to them. You've come against many trials. This has been a year of trials. Last year, the year before. The year before. But God told me to tell you that the trials are about over. God said, I've proven to the enemy that you will not fall. I've proven to the enemy you will not fall. Because your fire will go out. God told me to tell you. I'm getting ready to turn up your flame. I'm getting ready to put you on high. Uh, I'm getting ready to put you so high that you're going to burn up the neighborhood with your zeal and with your anointing. I'm getting ready to turn you up that when you go international, folk all over the globe will know that God has anointed you. When they bring up the lies, it'll consume it. When they bring up the conspiracies, it'll consume it. When they bring up the negatives, it'll consume it. When they try to put you down, they'll be consumed by the power of your anointing. And I claim it in the name of Jesus. Squeeze your brother's hand. I put in a new, fresh power of God. I'm turning up the fuel of the Holy Ghost, the fuel of the Word of God. Expect in the next few weeks an internal combustion that's going to light up your circumstance light up your household light up your family 
in the name of Jesus you are coming through a trial into a season of victory you have held out you have been strong you have proven the fact it's not by power it's not by might but it's by my spirit We hope this message was a true blessing. To inquire about other ministry products, write to us at Noel Jones Ministries.